Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Belief is based on a reference. Are we together? You cannot believe vaguely. There must be a reference. Preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built. This is why the disciples were very powerful. Jesus was a reference. And that's why every leader that must teach people, part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same. It is easy for people to believe when there is a measure, when a, when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of god upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing I am teaching now I am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things I'm sharing now were the things that I shared a number of years passed but their impact um, were not as impactful as it is now of course I've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication a, communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened people are only obsessed with results it is God that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 9, it says, receiving the end of your faith. We discussed that last week. It said, even the salvation of your soul, the salvation of your soul, bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit. I began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit God remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place Psalm 78 verse 41 
they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they said can god make a table in the wilderness they limited the holy one it was not their fault it was their conditioning after 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt god something about our culture as good as it is something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our minds i was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to cop to counsel an intending couple i'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions the first thing i want to examine is their passion for god and then the next thing i want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding what is your viewpoint about god what is your viewpoint about money what is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose what is your viewpoint about your personal life what is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and hope this does not just apply to the line of marriage it applies to everything there is something culture taught us about god there is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about god their experiences were their sermons they preached it with confidence we embraced it with sincerity and we are victims of their limitations are we together there's something that our past experiences have done i always give an example if it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message are we together because there is no template that represents favor in his life most of our families live from hand to mouth so every time we talk about prosperity our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them we have associated prosperity with negativism with fraud with with unseriousness with fetish demonic activities especially when young people are prosperous and you know let me tell you something after listening to a very powerful message after listening to a powerful series financial dominion the wealthy place the economic system of the kingdom you will think that your paradigm will change at once no it took a long time for it to be built it will take a repetition repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms you have to you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again that's why the bible says faith comment by hearing and hearing the next word hearing there is understanding hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of god hallelujah proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart it didn't say so he will become it didn't say so he is becoming for as he thinketh in his heart so is he for as he thinketh in his heart it equates my physical reality to my life this is the difference hear me brothers and sisters between a ceo who is living in an office with an ac having secretaries and pas and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad a, 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 a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration most times a security person is angry how can i be working so hard and i'm receiving ten thousand per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving five hundred thousand and my answer to that frustration is what switch them switch them for only two weeks take the megad don't change anything don't give him any orientation keep him in that office and take the ceo to the gate let me tell you what will happen after two weeks people will stop going to the office the ceo will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there are we together his hospitality his open-heartedness his calmness his people skills 
And all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there. Let's go to our man in the office. I know what he will be doing. Drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are, you are certainly not going to be here for a long time. Then he looks for what to steal. He signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching TV, changing channels, enjoying the AC. Probably texting all the people and saying my life has changed. The place will be dirty. I assure you he will not empty the waste bin. He doesn't have that frame of excellence. His paradigm of excellence is not that way. He will destroy everything. He will misplace documents, scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately. At the end of it, he will be frustrated. He will steal something sizable and run away. That will be the end of that man. Another popular example. You wore a shirt for one year. It was always clean and iron. Nobody knew it was one year old. And you gave somebody. And his mindset rubbed off on the shirt. In one month, he turned a white shirt to brown. Have you seen people like that? Yeah. Listen. Our physical environment is but a looking glass. You never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things. It's not even by trying to dress well. No, 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 no. It's a culture. You've got to change your mind. So the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, Permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I was not born this way. I re-engineered myself using the word of God and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Are we together? You must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life. Hallelujah. Paradigms. There are people who will use a water system toilet, a very clean toilet and finish. I mean in a house, not even the one in the hostels. A clean toilet. They enter the bathroom, they saw everything clean. They use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you I finished. They took their mindsets there. Their mindsets took them there. Are we together? Yeah. There is something about excellence. As obvious as it should be, you must be trained to discern it. Don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed, it is so. That's the reason why the higher you rise, the more you must have a greater capacity for patience. Because when your mindset changes, you wonder, sometimes I look at people and I am amazed the way they think. Certain things that should be so obvious, you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions. The power of paradigms. Are we together? A man can come to you, someone can come to a Jimmy for instance, and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how God has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir if you were to be at my age what will you advise me to do or if you will be at my level in life what two things do you think I should focus on now we never ask questions have you seen people who have access to great men one guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. He came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. 
there are cultures am i right that train people the moment they see you with some level of weight they say ah this is things are working but you know that absolutely nothing is working paradigms that's what informs people to live fake lives there are people who if god blesses with fifty thousand now their mindset tells them look you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong so they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes let me tell you something when i meet people who are greater than me i have no pressure to prove any point because i know i'm stupid when i'm doing it but then you see a lot of people with their little understanding small results here and there they come and they never learn they are trying to impress you hey, Jimmy, i'm a business person i just read robert kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance that act alone is a revelation of where you are because great people are silent let her works speak for her at the gates and so when we're done let me finish up my story they were about to go i was greeting them you know and then the gentleman just came to me and said sir please just one favor i said what is it say let me snap with you and i looked at him i said this this boy is not wise honestly speaking that's why we must crave for wisdom i said this this guy is not smart one bit i said all right that's okay he snapped with me about three hours later my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on facebook that me and my very good friend apostle joshua selma now hold on i'm not insulting him he may even be listening now listen listen do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around look let me tell you if a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close to him something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place if Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry even me I know God knows the devil knows that we are not colleagues they will snap me standing when you watch the picture it, I will be kneeling down because the reality of my heart will reflect itself amen say paradigms say mindsets say programmings something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations culture experiences are we together i don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing i'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details and um, I trust that God will change our mindsets. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing God can do about your life, as powerful as he is, if you are not willing to change your mindset. Lord, I want you, I want you to bless me. And God says, okay, can you allow me to work on you? There's nothing wrong with me. God says, all right. Here you have it. That's good. There is a mindset that is responsible for poverty. There is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years. Maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago. I would have been 100 times without exaggerating higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute lay your hand on your head and say lord there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations please take it out of me go ahead and pray take it out of me. take it out of me there's something i grew up in nigeria and there is a way nigerians are lovely people they are great people but there is a faulty paradigm take it away from my life take it away from my life i declare my disloyalty to every paradigm no matter how long i have held it a paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing a paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader a paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person a paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy 
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three to rising above recession. Key number three to rising above any kind of limitation is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities. I'm going to dwell here. There is a lot to talk about here. The discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance. It's not based on some kind of sentiments. The disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential, among many other reasons, primarily is their value. Write this down, please. Your value is a representation of your worth. Your value is a representation of your worth. W-O-R-D. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. Your value is a representation of your worth based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide. On the strength of the problems that you solve. And on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform. Put it in another way. If you are not providing any kind of solution, if you are not solving any kind of problem, and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people, you are not valuable. And hear me please. Relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system. We've said it again and again. Let me just do a recap on it. I'll touch a bit into that. Right, you can get the message the wealthy place. Write this down. This is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom. Our rewards in life and that reward can be financial, the sense of security, the sense of honor that we receive, whatever it is. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand or the need for what we do. Number one, the demand or the need for what we do. Number two, our ability to do what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. My relevance in life, my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God. The demand for what I do, my ability to do what I do, and the difficulty in replacing me. Let me tell you, when you understand this, you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now. This is why pastors are wealthy. Listen, pastors think they are wealthy. I was teaching the school of ministry, uh, school of ministry students. And I said, many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God. That's not the reason why people are wealthy. It's based on a law. If I am blessed today, among other reasons is based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together 
A man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick. A man of God is rich because he's providing solutions. His solution may be supernatural in origin. The solution may be spiritual. When you connect people to Jesus Christ, you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men. And the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value, whether given for free or sold, a reward must come to you. A reward must come to you. The laws are inflexible. You cannot change them. So for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter, for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies, for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival, to bring miracles, signs and wonders, I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors. Let me tell you why that is powerful. Much more than business. It is an intrinsic value. Value that is not dependent on any external environment. And value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors. So one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value. Another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value. Don't say I am poor. Don't say I am mediocre. What value are you bringing to the table of destiny? Call this stage the table of greatness. There are enough seats for everyone, but your pass is your value. Your pass is your value. Not just any value. Values that are needed and useful. Values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone are we together what have you brought to the table of greatness that author you, you know listen listen do you know why they call people thieves and frown because you see rewards but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward that's why we hate arm robbers an arm robber brings a gun and says give me your one million and you tell him what is the value he says, i have no value but i have a gun to threaten you so it is bad but that same one million you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it listen you don't sit down and wish to rise you grow in value to the level that matches what you desire So, Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value, someone can bless him with 10 million. Whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him. What is the difference? Their value. Your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability. There are two dimensions to value. I want to talk a bit about value. Number one is intrinsic value. Write it down. Intrinsic or inherent value. Value that came with you. It was a gift from God to you. Part of your packaging and part of your wiring. It can be improved upon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we blessed this night? I really want to challenge you. Look at me, please. Please do not trivialize what I'm teaching you. God is not a herbalist. This is the key that lifts men above recession. I was talking to one of our ladies. She works in the bank. And um, I was talking to her this morning. And I told her, I said, how is it going in the bank? And she said, Kai, things are, are really bad for many people. Though. But she said, there are some. I said that's right in my mind I said that's me you are now talking about me he said there are some their lives have increased and multiplied do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual 
recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective there was famine in samaria minus the king minus the king number two minus elijah all the people elijah never said please even elijah begged for bread elijah did not beg for bread in samaria he came gallantly and saw people eating their children the other one said we ate my child yesterday we said let's boil this other child and the woman refused are we together prophet we boiled my child yesterday when i was eating my child we ate together now is the turn to eat her own child and they refused and the prophet said no let me tell you something your value vetoes your education your value vetoes your cultural background your value vetoes any limitation i don't care what it is will you open up the gates open up the doors will you open up the gates open up the doors listen believe me brothers and sisters when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things Sunday Adelaja 96% of his membership in a communist nation right ukraine a communist nation 96 percent of its members are white in a communist nation value the key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people this is what a lot of pastors go through this is what a lot of business people go through this is what a lot of individuals go through they think the key is resentment and anger and hatred no the key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value a student comes in backtrack five years six years a naive young person probably in his teenage comes into an institution i want to study medicine not even having an idea of what he wants to do are we together or the implication and he goes through five six probably seven years of rigorous training they never change his skin they never change his clothes they only change his mind and after six seven years a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value i am surprised when many people say why am i poor what kind of question is that why am i poor why am i suffering the recession and I mean no disrespect as I communicate this. Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says, everybody, go and hold someone whose life you changed. If you can hold five people, you receive a million dollars. Some of us who roam to everybody, you touch somebody, you say, I will slap you. You've not added any value to my life. Why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says, you changed me. You changed me. You blessed me. You advised me. My business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me. That sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life. The power of your secret place changed my life. You preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me. Problem solved. Solutions provided. Lives transformed. And there is a reward waiting for you. I guarantee you. No witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value. What is my value? What is my gift? What is that ability that can bail me out? 
Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian. I want to say something that is very serious right now. I'm a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I love everyone in this country. We are brothers and sisters. Are we together? But listen. Do you know why? I want to be sincere with you. Do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now? I know many people think he's Buhari. Others think he's Jonathan. Other people think he's PDP, APC. I'm not a politician. Are you together? Let me tell you. Something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people. We only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years. The same way to happen to your destiny. I'm in a, a department. They give everybody food free of charge. So I think, let me tell you, you do not generalize impact and success. You must be sure what part you are contributing. Otherwise, you will be ashamed with time. We are worship team. We are all great. But in all sincerity, what is your unique contribution? One day you hold the mic alone. And on that day, we know that you are the one limiting the worship team. On that day, we know, ah, so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you. We have been managing it, but right now, we are a group of intelligent lecturers. We are all intelligent people. The day you have to do a presentation as a person, life must single you out one day to defend yourself. I belong to an anointed ministry, great and wonderful. We are shaking the world. I agree with you. A day will come, you will stand before the sick. Apostle, I'm not there. Hey, Jimmy, I'm not there. My head of department, prayer, ushering, oh, decoration, they are all not there. On that day, that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise. Life will challenge you. Life will test it. And until you are able to prove it, the disciples kept enjoying corporate success. Until one day, when Jesus climbed up the Mount of Transfiguration, they were happy. They brought an epileptic person. They said, don't worry about Jesus. We are here. Just keep him down. They struggled. They were embarrassed. Nothing happened. Let me tell you. Do you know what causes jealousy? The ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about. You've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons. No, this person cannot be sick. Then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for, before the opening prayer, he's healed. And then the person testifies exactly as it happened. You know how people testify? They will say it the way it happened. May God make you to, be, to develop an appetite to be valuable. An appetite to be valuable. Let me tell you how you know you are really valuable. When no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver, you are exceptionally valuable. Listen. Listen. I can't remember how much this is, how much they bought it. But let's assume this is 300,000. Just an assumption. Right? Assume that this pulpit is 300,000. When they call the price, what do you do? You look at it, the material, the quality, and he says, okay. If they look at this and say, bring 10 million, you look at it and say, no. That's the same way they rate you. So you say 20,000, they say you are telling the truth. Then you say 100,000, they say for where? Is money free like that? But there are others, they don't even say anything. Their value says any amount, priceless, 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 priceless. And so someone brings 10 million and says, sir, please don't be offended it's a privilege for me to do this may you be such a person may you be such a person hallelujah Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again the Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no 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 we are going to come in. Now, he's not only ministering in Lagos, he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade. Again, say value. Yeah. 
when Ben Hinn enters a, a nation, no matter who is inviting, uh, inviting him, he's received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's strolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God, myself and this great ministry will be so valuable. This place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now. The protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around. Why? Because every week, groups are coming, individuals are coming from all over the nation. It's called value. If we remain at this level, we will never rise. But if we keep rising by the Spirit of God and through determination, a time will come, somebody will come from another state, another nation, and say it's a privilege, finally. Are you that valuable? Are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life. Are you so valuable? I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. Then you will know why certain... The money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud. Wanting something for nothing is wickedness. Now let me tell you how many of us approach it. Oh God, will you keep looking at me like this? And God says, I've been looking. I said laws and I put preachers. He said, let them come back to, to life. Remember the prayer of, of, of who? The rich man. Let them come back to life. He said, no. They have the prophets and the law. If they will not listen to them, even if somebody comes back to the dead, they will not listen. Just like there are people God has anointed, but many people will not listen. Why should you fail in life? Your background? Who told you it's because of your background? There are people today with no arms, but they are valuable. There are people with no legs, they are valuable. There are people with no eyes, they are valuable. There are people who cannot speak, they are valuable. We don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God. He's really valuable. He's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me. If, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It earned you the right here. When we stop, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in the filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the filling station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? 
why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Hapa. Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended. My friend, we used to eat together, but you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so, 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 so organization. Please, let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potential is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me because of the grace I carry? Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing. But vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the, your competitors. Just by looking at them, you see the flawlessness of their preparation. And just the preliminary screening, you are back home. And then he said, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it. Value 
only becomes valuable when competence is added to it yesterday i was studying on diamonds i just decided to study on diamonds i didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds different kinds and i was seeing the diamonds and the the rigor in finding them and i mean their structure the the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business? It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane, it will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining, and you just take a flight, and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land koinonia i'm challenging you i will be a wicked preacher i will be a wicked man of god to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what i'm doing with my life and by the grace of god and in all sincerity that's what has brought me where i am and i told you where i am now is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will reveal to you what i'm doing today value always precedes manifestation so when you see a man manifest that's not his true state it is his passive state based on your seeing him now in business in ministry there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works and they may never find out there are many people who don't know how this thing works i'm sorry to say but look at zari as a case study almost every business in zaria almost not all but almost every business in zaria is tainted by mediocrity smallness average there's there's nothing world class there's there's no touch of excellence in it we are limited because of our culture i have my small shop this is nice we never learn someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you then you make it again no you must learn from other people's mistakes Are we together i have hardly seen things in this city and i say it with all humility that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute from our hotels are we together to our restaurant services in fact from the most part they are terrible yet there are many of us seated here if i ask you now what did you say i've been cooking you are the only one who has not eaten the fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. It means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us, look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I may see you. I said it, I think it was to the School of Ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authority 
authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life you are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow years ago a few well they are not really my friends but they are ministers too they met me and said apostle at your level there are some bishops who are not like you you should be on tv and radio i said i hear so that i will get to a point where i'm limited and i have to beg for partners isaiah 77 give me isaiah 61 give me 61 naira or 610 naira i don't want to do all those things I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problems solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year more than any year put together now please i'm sorry if it looks like i'm boasting i'm only challenging you in the time we call recession say something i do not know say it again something i do not know may be responsible for my limitation one of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report, I said, nobody a trek from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail. Not for Friday's program. Any time this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry. At any time, whether it was planned or not. Brothers and sisters, there is something that is being done. This is where I'm taking you to. It was not like that. Our first crusade, they were almost locking me because of 150,000. Aaron, whereas the money that is circulating now was still there. I have learned through pain. I have learned through mistakes. I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Prophesy to yourself. Say myself. Prepare. Myself. Be competent. Myself. Work on yourself. Don't make noise. Don't take this colleague mentality moving around. I used to know you, Pastor Femi. We are fellow pastors. Colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people. Oh, we were classmates. The same class. The same university. The same this. The, we are both doctors. We are both professors. No, no, no. The Bible says one star different from another in glory. Say in the name of Jesus. There is a, an ability. Say there is a gift. Within me. That is greater than Zaria. Greater than Nigeria. There is an intrinsic value. Within me. That can bless me. 
that can bless the kingdom and I will search it out hallelujah there is an intrinsic value now intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent the only thing you do is to develop it is there I'll give you an example intellectual property is an intrinsic value you don't refrigerate it you don't warm it you don't keep it in a safe in a bank is there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to walk first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing work on it you are an entrepreneur work on it don't say i'm a ceo ceo that is not producing results is a sign to sit down say i'm a potential ceo there are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Benin republic Portacourt, lagos and so on and so forth and you look at the person who is talking you ask him sir what do you know about real estate say look that's not the most important thing me i'm telling you my father did it he gave me and he has one plot of land somewhere you see we we mock ourselves packaging is only meaningful when there is content packaging is only meaningful when there is content packaging without content is like a balloon you hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is is a metal you will just touch it and it will burst i sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry yet they want me to buy their album no i told you last week there are many people who claim they can cook they have restaurants are we together and you start bullying people and say ah shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant i saw you the other day ella you should come to my restaurant to eat are we not fellow koinonia people she wants to be healthy she wants to be healthy and as far as it is concerned you have not worked on yourself one of our school of ministry ladies uh, um, she made one beautiful work just a beautiful artwork the students saw it i mean she's here very fantastic artwork and when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value. Monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent. Then you place a price on it. Are we together? Now, I want everybody to write. Write three things you know God has put in you that must be developed and deployed. Please write it down. Young, old, write it down type it right do whatever it is please write it down don't flatter yourself don't write what you don't have just patiently think and you'll find your own don't just write because your neighbor wrote something value value Aaron is here he handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics why because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself the other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his, uh, just a little like uh, dining or thereabout and his uh, little office that he has and I saw him writing goals. I saw targets. I saw plans of action. I said, this is excellent. This person is going to go far. Please, do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward. That you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you. It must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing hallelujah I met a pastor and the pastor told me something 
He said, man of God. If you, he's quite an elderly man. He said, if you continue going the way you are going, you are going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you to add to my life. I am not ashamed of my ignorance. I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that I do not know. There are many things I do not know. I know some, but there are many others. If I knew them, I would not be where I am. And I humble myself to seek for knowledge. I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others. Are we together? You call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person, when can I come and meet you? Or when can you come and meet me? And the person says, why? He says, I have a business proposal. I want us to rob minds together. Sit down with your broke, bad attitude and you will never rise. Never, never rise. There's so many people who do that. Why am I challenging you? I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially, societally, then you can say based on the GDP of a nation, based on certain indices, a nation, when it does not meet certain things, then there is a recession. There is inflation or whatever it is. But not an individual. There has been no time in the Bible where famine affected everybody. There, were, there, there has always been exemption. Those who offer value are the ones who are exempted. Please hear me. What gives you the justification that between today, Friday, and next Friday, something would have entered your hand? Or I'm not necessarily just saying money. Somebody would have acknowledged the fact that God is using you to bless him. My life has been transformed. What value do you have? You see, the anointing does two things. It activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there. It activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word. Introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with god that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transformed beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. Greatness, wealth, any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system. It's not just the issue of the will of God. The issue of the will of God as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery. It is clear in the word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter. Thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day, right? that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a part you have to play. There is a part that I have to play. Huh? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law, he says, shall not depart from out of thy mouth. He says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. 
then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please I know that I've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you I want to I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance it's capital intensive to live in Nigeria to send children to school almost all of us here by the time you are a Christian and you are born again you have commitments to your church to your group to your ministry and part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and I don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession I tell you are we together did you know for instance did you know for instance every week we rent chairs in the dozens during the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens that's someone's business are we together that's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it just i mean just koinonia alone please activate streams of income take responsibility for your life and don't give people anything substandard you are you are insincere and you are ungodly when you whet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer don't be that insincere make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough then you can open up your hands for value don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense no don't do that if you know you cannot work on it package yourself work on yourself i work on myself every day i returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as i was i made sure that my daily goals were met please don't you think that it is just the anointing the anointing is there. I'm going to talk about it. 
Paul said, I thank my, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. I prepare an average of two to three sermons every week. It takes time. It takes research. It takes staying in the spirit. There are other aspects of my life I am involved in. What are you doing? There is no laziness. Don't sit down and say, oh God, when will you change my, my situation? Don't sit down and say, who will come and marry me out of this problem? Nobody. At least nobody in Koinonia. And brothers, don't wait and say, which lady? The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are we together? This is the undoing of Africa. This is the undoing of many people. My neighbors, um, they bought a few months ago, they bought a grinding engine. And the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there, at once they became relevant in that environment. Almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever. They come to them. What is their reward? The transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them. A place that was previously very quiet and conservative. Now you see the people. Early in the morning, the engine is up and they are grinding. Sometimes still late in the night and they are making money from it. Please, I want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself, young and old. Sit down and say, I now see why things are not working in my life. I now see why I'm feeling the heat of the recession. I am not saying you should be a money monger. Remember, we've done financial dominion. So you cannot sit and say now, which business do I do? Uh -uh. That's a wrong question. How do I develop myself to rise to a point of value? When you are valuable, then now you build a system around that value. That's what we call business. Business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people. Then you receive financial rewards among other things. There's nothing mysterious about business. Building a business is simply having a value, converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful, and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give. Very simple. But it's not as simple as it sounds. The last point. Rise to a point of value. Rise to a point of value. The last point. What is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant? The fourth key to rising beyond recession. We name the series Thrive. To thrive does not mean to manage. The thrive, to thrive means to blossom. Thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out. You see how a plant grows out of the soil. And you see it moving regardless of, of the strength of the soil. It shoots through it and it blossoms. That's what it means to thrive. You don't thrive if there are no obstacles. You thrive in spite of obstacles. The fourth key is an encounter with the anointing. Ah, anointing. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me anointing fall sing it one more time everybody anointing fall power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Ah. 
I love what I'm about to share with you. I'm telling you. Because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, Tim. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. anointing write this down let me give you a few definitions about the anointing the down the anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent him in your territory the anointing is God's seal of authorization is his authorization upon an individual to represent him the authorization for legislature the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth the anointing Number two, the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3, how terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. To compel compliance. Number three. Now I love this definition. The anointing is an empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. An empowerment to manifest, to reveal to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this. Experience possibilities. It's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe. We've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there, there are limitless possibilities in God. And those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction, the grace of God is at work upon the life of an individual. The Bible is a compendium. An unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God. Revealed from generation to generation. Hallelujah. I got a testimony recently and um, I'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so I can share it in the open. When we went to Yola for the last crusade a few months, I think a month or two ago, we went to Yola. One of the person who was driving me around is a doctor, PhD, you know, with his wife. He's been married and they've, they've been, I mean, no child. This thing has not worked for them. And he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed, you know, it's been a while they've been married they're probably following now and his wife couldn't take in and you know when they were done we're about to leave i asked him i said what would you want the lord to do and then prayed for them and he sent me a text i think it was on our way to bauchi now on our cookie no no bauchi was on our way to bauchi i just got a text he said apostle the text is still on my phone he said i called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said i think she's three or a month pregnant Say results. 
Shout it. Listen. Results are evidences that God is alive. Not just an evidence that a man is anointed. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. During our dinner, we'll be playing some videos. I hope that the media would consider that. I don't know what their plans are, but I hope that they should incorporate that. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations. And some of you will marvel and wonder. Marvel and wonder at the hand of God and what he can do when a man is anointed. I've said it and I will say it again and again. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. How can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference? It is the very difference when all is said and done. The grace that comes upon the life of a man. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil I have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something I have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of joshua selman take the anointing out of my life and i'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um, leadership, their, their summit that they hold, their yearly summit and I was listening to some speakers and while they were talking, I said my God these guys are not just business moguls, they are, they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together? thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in second kings chapter 4 the wife of the son of the prophets went to Elisha and Elisha said what do I need to do to you what is what is wrong what is the problem and she said you know this and that there is this situation and then he says what do you have in your house and she said nothing thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil and he said that's it he said go and borrow vessels verse 3 go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors he said borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that are we together the anointing 
and then when she got it he now told her, i said go and close the door when the prophet was talking the anointing is a living thing it was hearing it was hearing the discussion and the moment she did that she began to pour the oil the oil began to multiply listen it's not enough to be anointed you must be anointed at a level that can command notable results it's not enough to be anointed the anointing is like currency the anointing is like currency hundred naira can buy sweet but hundred naira cannot buy shoe but it is still money so don't say i'm anointed the bible says acts chapter 10 right when paul was speaking in the house of cornelius the salvation of the jews in verse 38 he said how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed jesus so it's not just that jesus was anointed look at the extent how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and then the bible says on the strength of that anointing he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for god was with him the anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll no those are just effects of the anointing on the human body and then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation but the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking results results i don't care whether you shake like a leaf results brothers and sisters i just want to praise i lift my hands to say i love you you are everything to be and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your Jesus are you the Messiah is it true that the anointing is on you and Jesus said all right watch this the blind eyes open the deaf ears hear and he said go back and tell John how do you know a man who is anointed results results don't trivialize results it's not all about the results are you joking what then is it about results lives changed results hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that is the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results are we together results a whole family almost ravaged with hiv that cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed not just one person it's called results brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth you may be criticized but you will never be ignored once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man upon the life of a business satan will raise criticisms why so that your word will not be heard so that you will not be believed and so that people will not be blessed but here's what the bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth the truth was buried only for three days after three days it came back to life results results notable results not just results 
it says the spirit of the lord please give us isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy it was a prophecy about jesus christ the spirit of the lord is upon me he says for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted to set the captives free are we together and then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our god and all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 and then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in zion to give them beauty for ashes that's what the anointing does beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the garment of praise right oh I'm, I'm, the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the holy spirit your life is transformed your mindset is changed you become a leader you become an ambassador of the kingdom then you are now anointed again to reproduce say the anointing there is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing we believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time absolutely so you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band because everything is done with respect to the anointing they believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics they are spirit and life are we together listen please hear me i do not boast to have risen so far compared to where i need to go i am just starting but i can tell you this i have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of god upon the earth and this is what they have done and this is what they do daily the keys are finite the keys are not infinite but every one of them is important for the door to open the keys to your destiny they are not infinite they are not so many but each and every one of them must be there in place it's like a code your passion for god a transformed mind your gifts and your abilities and then the anointing of god upon you no 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 you can't be weak you can't be weak you can't be weak it's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this i talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says look this is what you are looking for don't go around and waste your time and come back and say ah, ah, i didn't know it was like this hallelujah holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence make sure you talk to him while praying holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple with your presence sing it one more time holy spirit you are welcome Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait. outside you can come in clear the way for them so they can come. I wait on you 
sing the song it's not a special number fill this temple with your power that's what we need the anointing upon our lives holy spirit you are welcome fill this temple we wait on you Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. with your destiny ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny don't worry about the rain there are people who will direct you strategically don't be distracted 
Munda uka kasu nanka Upa ingichi kaipaya Ungi mapasu nanka Upa ingichi Nanda uka kasu nanka Upa ingichi kaisaya Nagi mapasu nanka Upa ingichi Nanda uka kasu nanka Ubangi chika isayabo Nagi mama sunanka Ubangi chika Hallelujah Prayer point number one Father, I declare that my mindset must change Lift your voice and pray Pray from the depth of your heart Shabarata kasote ketele baba 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 Harato so segete barata la kora hasa bara bara. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. listen to me the quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation not every information is needed and useful for your destiny the fact that you are getting informations does not mean you are growing the fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising the information you are getting must be needed and useful it must be needed and useful I like you to pray and say, Lord, the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny. Lift your voice and pray. the right knowledge the right information the right knowledge the right information hallelujah hallelujah it's raining but we're still praying hallelujah Apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life? that should bless my world reveal it reveal it to me lift your voice and pray
Matoko so preteke shebara da bara da bara da bara. Shebara tasata la kataprash. Lord, my gift. Lord, the ability that you have put within me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Rakata ba 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 kata reketa. Shekete reto sada ba da bara da bara. Rakata ba rata ka shekete le ba 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 ba. There is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We are praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. There is a gift in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, they that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, they have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, then their kings to the brightness of your rising. It says your gates shall be continually open. They will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen. I want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift, I call them into my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Everyone in every territory called, ordained, anointed. Everyone called to honor your gift. Your capacity, your education, your skill, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry, call them forth by the power of the prophetic, by the power of the prophetic. Ra 
anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil. There is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Hey. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Everyone that asked it, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. Stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions. Testimonies beyond imagination. You can pray it through genuine desire. A heart that is thirsty. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, anoint me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I'll take my life, breathe on me. Sons 
of Solomon says, because of the ointment, so do the virgins love thee. Because of the ointment, so realms you have never entered will come to you. It's not just talking of women. Because of the ointment upon my head, so do the virgins love thee. They desire to be with you. We are going to pray. I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart. You are going to challenge every door of limitation. See, let me tell you. Honestly, if we are to be truthful with ourselves, there are people, you are not down, but you are not up either. You can move up. When you are up, you know you are there. I like you to pray and say, I challenge limitations. You are a spirit and I speak to you. In this season you are living, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I challenge limitation over my life. I challenge limitations. I challenge limitations. Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord upon Koinonia. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priest. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism. It's influence. The key and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles, access to kings, access to men of influence, access to custodians of systems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the blessings and the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access unusual influence God has given us access to politicians access to governmental figures access to kings access to financial people access to mentors access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success. I want you to pray again and say, Lord, the access I need to end struggle, bring it to my life. Bring it to my life. Lift your voice. It's not as hard as we make it. Influence is powerful. Influence is powerful. Please, I like you to pray. 
Lord, I desire influence. The capacity to rise to a platform where your name can be heard, where your glory can be seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. The body would have remained there indefinitely. It was not a prayer warrior that demanded the body. A man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says he was a noble man. A man of influence. And he used his access. Are we together? To Herod. To Caesar. To demand the body of Jesus. He was a noble man. He had influence. He had a virgin tomb. He had influence. And he said, look, Herod, I need the body of this man. And he said, you have it. There are things you have been praying for that influence will give you at a platter of gold. Are we together? I shared with you the testimony years ago. Listen to me. How that somebody was too short to get to NDA and they said you are disqualified and then he came back and because he had access to the emir he complained and the emir said they should go back to NDA and tell the people that emir yakara we should say the emir has added his height they should take him that's the power of influence are we together I have gotten certain things in my life on the sheer platform of influence you need it don't let mediocres deceive you that you don't need it that's why somebody can come and bully a church with their land and collect it together with all the lawyers there there is no influence in the military you should have influence somebody that can stand and become a representative imagine if Daniel was not in Babylon Imagine if Esther was not in the king's palace. Imagine if Joseph was not in Egypt. Let me show you how men. There was a time they wanted to kill Paul. It was not prayer. Paul took advantage of his influence. Will you kill a Roman citizen? Because the issue was too serious. If he said I'm an apostle, you would have died there. He said I'm a Roman citizen. Ah. Uh -uh. You don't touch Roman citizens. We have been preached far too long in the body of Christ that the desire for influence is carnality. No. Carnality is the influence of things on your relationship to God. It has nothing to do with wealth. I want to be friends with multi-millionaires. I want to be friends with governmental figures so that we can come and say, can you give us land for church here? And they say, ah, you, please have it protocols have been bypassed in my life protocols have been bypassed in this ministry because God has granted us grace we are friends with the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers we are friends with the police, the military you name it from any angle there is somebody to speak when a student is victimized on campus there are intellectuals among us there are people who we can speak to oh daddy sir, mommy sir please can you help this message let me tell you, it's a tragic thing when you are in the place of help and there is no voice to speak. Sometimes you are in the prison, you don't have access to the palace. You need somebody who is already in the palace to say, no, I endorse this person. This person is a man of integrity. It's not all about what you can do by yourself. Are we together? Nigeria that is full of bureaucracy and sentiment. You need men and women strategically positioned to help you. Matthew Ashimolowo was the first Christian to be allowed in Ghana, Ghana TV, mainstream, to preach. They refused it. The indigenous pastors did everything to do. They refused it. But when he came, because he was connected to somebody who was connected to the government and they knew that their daily bread was dependent on it, they allowed it. Who has God raised in your life to speak for you? Brothers and sisters, you cannot rise here though. Let me tell you, it's a mystery I'm sharing with you. You need men of influence. It's a class of destiny helpers.
we together? That somebody can speak to you. Yes, I know the rent is due and they are about to throw you out. But somebody is a friend to your landlord. He can say, please landlord, I know that you are supposed to drive this, but this person is my son. And he said, on grounds of relationship. Do you know, let me tell you, when how you know there is no help in your life is when you get into trouble. You fight alone. You pray alone. When Daniel was in the den, Darius could not sleep. He rose up the next day. He said, oh Daniel, has your God delivered you? When he said to so say, bring him out, go and carry all those people. Throw them in. Who can punish your enemies? Who has what it takes to bring to book they that speak against the purposes of God? Every one of our board of trustees by the grace of God this ministry is a man or a woman of influence. Are we together? If there are people today, the government cannot come and pull them. There are churches. One of my pastor friends was speaking to me. He heads the branch of one ministry in a particular northern city. And he said how that they had refused. They showed him the letter signed by the governor that they cannot give land. It's impossible. No matter what you do, they cannot give church land. All the other churches that had it had it since. But in recent time, no, they will not give it. And a particular denomination in this country, they decided to do an expansion program. And they have six of their churches there. All of them own their land. They influence. Shout it again. Somebody call somebody who said, Look, be careful. This seat you are in is for four years. You don't play with no matter how stupid, no matter how a madman is, he does not enter fire by mistake. You need influence. There are many believers, there are many families that are bullied, and there's no one they can run to. There are many men of God that are bullied. They've not, the Bible said, be wise as serpents. You live in an economy, a system that is hostile to anything God. You need influence. Unfortunately, all the people in our lives are like us. We are the most influential persons among them. When God taught me this, I started making friends with billionaires. I'm not looking for their money. Access and influence. Are we together? The property that we want to get, the person said they were, they were giving it to somebody. There are some business persons who came and wanted to get it. But because of influence, they said, no, 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 David, we want to give believers and we want to give this ministry. Brothers and sisters, if you don't pray this prayer, you will struggle alone. You don't have to pay for everything by yourself. Let influence pay for some things for you. One more time, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, connect me to men of influence. Men who fear God, they are men of influence. One recommendation can give you a job. It can give you a job. One recommendation can honor your proposal. Be wise as serpents. Be wise as serpents. Be gentle as doves. Be wise as serpents. Hallelujah. Listen. Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But it says, I am come that ye may have life. Hallelujah. The Bible says, upon Mount Zion, certain things will happen. It said there will be holiness. And then there will be deliverance. And after that, the way will be cleared. And the sons of Jacob will now possess their possessions. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the devil is going to bow tonight. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it once.
hands from your heart. Make every change. Make every change. One more time from the depths of your heart. There is power in the again but I told you causes exist yokes exist there are people carrying them today who have been deceived that nothing is going nothing is wrong but on account of what Christ has done our job tonight is to stamp it by the power of the Holy Ghost so right now we are going to set on fire everything that has not been planted by God hallelujah I want you to get ready because the Bible says surely there is an end it says for surely there is an end if it had a beginning it has an end rise up on your feet everyone Hush. hallelujah praise the Lord see the power of God will shake many of us inside and outside to the foundations until everything that does not look like him leave. Are you getting me? There is, there is fire in this place, especially for those outside. We are going to count three and we will shout that name, Jesus. I want you to get ready. At the shout of that name, not just for you, hallelujah, not just for you alone but for your loved ones whatever will not let you go this night must go for you hallelujah are you ready now thank you jesus christ see i'm telling you i see a lot of oppression especially outside a lot of oppression this is why god has sent us bible says he gave them authority he gave them power said through who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness hallelujah lift your hands everybody at the count of three i want you to shout listen these are the things that limit people these are the things that limit destiny and tonight god has brought us so that we can experience his power hallelujah there's fire in this place at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus inside and outside. The overflow here and the other one there. Shout Jesus at the count of three. And at the mention of that name, let's see the power that will stand. Hallelujah. Tonight is your night of liberty. Bring them out, please. Ushers, be sensitive. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Let your power move across this place inside and outside i confront gates and doors and altars and yokes and everything that is not of god the presence of god is here and in the mighty name of jesus it will bow are you ready now one two three let god's people go 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 every foul devil every wicked spirit inside and outside come out now come out now come out now let god's people go now let God's people go now. Let God's people go now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let God's people go now. Are you ready to shout one more time? Are you ready to shout one more time? At the count of three, shout that name, Jesus. One, two, three. 
Mato Paste, Rekoskova, Empreskova Rikata, Sekete Kariaba, Maka Prosko Prekete, Rekotosia, every power, every altar of darkness, I set on fire outside. Let the fire of God move outside. Let the fire of God move outside. Let the fire of God move outside. We dethrone principalities. We command an exodus. We command liberty. Hallelujah. 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 Now we are going to pray. Listen. This one is not just you right now, but your family members. Hallelujah. Many of you, what will happen to you now will be the power of God challenging the things that camouflage themselves in your family. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Don't tell me there's nothing going wrong. Don't let the devil confuse you, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name again. There are a lot of people outside, especially from this first overflow. A lot of people outside. Listen, if you love your family members, I'd like you to stand. Stand for them. This is the root problem that disguises itself. It, it may have different names. He said the enemy has done this. Don't let technology confuse you. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Are you ready now? Lift your hands please. Jesus, thank you. My God, there will be a mighty wave of the Spirit. All you need to do for me is to flash the symbol. Are you ready now? At the count of three, with all your heart, my God, let your power move, representing families with dethroned yokes in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Hoprokotos. Families be free. Families be free. Hoprokotos. Reketeteta. Eprotokoshopa. I challenge altars. Yokes. Hoproskopa. Tying down families. Tying down families. Hey, I, come, I, come, I, come. I command, lose them now, lose them now, every enchantment, every divination, now, be loose, be loose, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, be loose.
For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Now every foul spirit afflicting these people at the count of three time up you must go one two three go 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 on your mark set go 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 now go 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 don't waste our time go out of them and go now there is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Bring her, don't worry, your shot. Bring her to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. To break every chain. Just bring her here. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Bring her. Don't waste our time. Go. Leave her. Leave her. Go. Now. Help. That's the end. Go. We don't have all of that time to waste. We have to do a lot of things. Hallelujah. Listen. There are two people outside. Ushers, I want you to help them so they don't injure themselves. The power of God will pick them and bring them inside. Right now. It will happen right now. Two people outside. Please just guide them so they don't injure themselves. Right now. Let the angel. That confirms the word of the Lord right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Two people outside. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. Hallelujah. You had a dream. Please listen to me. You had a dream. And the snake, a snake beat you on your left leg. A dream. It was in a dream. But it was very real. Please, who is that person? Please, let's save them. Come out quickly. You're a guy. Come out quickly. You're a guy. Let's hurry up. If you're still thinking about it, go back to your seat. Snake beat you on your left leg. Praise the Lord. Now, there is a lady here. Please listen. There is a lady here. You hear voices and they speak to you. This has happened for a long time. I mean real voices. Evil voices, I mean. Now, not the voice of the spirit. 
In fact, it's one of the things that has bothered you. You've shared it with a friend. Please, who is that? Very quickly. Very quickly, come very quickly. I'm just flowing by the Spirit right now. I give the chains falling. Falling. I give the chains. Lump in the left breast has just been healed. Lump in the left breast. The Lord is healing someone. Please check yourself. We'll take some testimonies. Lump in the left breast just got healed right now. Hallelujah. Brother, hold my hands. Whatever has not been planted by God leaves you now. Look at me. Look at me. Your spiritual life. You see, the Bible says, He that breaks the hedge, the serpent will strike. Your spiritual life must be on fire. I give the chains. Please hold my hands. Let her go now. Thou devil. Come out. I see you in the spirit. Out. I give the chains falling. Look at me, my dear. Jesus will set you free. Okay? You believe that? Hold my hands. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let her be free right now from those demonic voices. Hallelujah. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Lay your hands on your stomach. We cancel that report. You will never hear any report of fibroid or growth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come, my dear. Look at me. You love Jesus with all your heart. You want to be very serious with him because this is what the Lord is asking. It's not just the issue of healing and miracle. You see, listen, God is not a magician. It's not somebody you just run to, collect miracle and run and go back to do your life. My dear, the lady standing behind the two ladies with yellow, lift your hands. You, just lift your hands and look at me. How dare you defy the presence of God? How dare you defy the presence of God? Mm. For he will give us the eyes of eagles. Now in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, you are going right now. For I've seen you in the spirit. One, two, three. Out of her right now. Go, go, go. Go. I see the chains falling. Yeah. I see the chains falling. Hallelujah. God bless you. We have a lot to do. My brother, you love the Lord with all your heart. I want you to know that when you stay in his presence, it melts away every darkness. You must believe this. Hallelujah. You must believe this. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. When he finds himself in you, it becomes a doorway. Hallelujah. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. And touch not your unclean thing. I set you free in the name of Jesus. I set you free in the name of Jesus. Please quickly. I set you free. Now, I want to pray for people with peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. Please, peptic ulcer, just come out quickly. File out here quickly. Please, let's save time. Our brother is wedding tomorrow and we don't want to take too much of their time. While they are coming out, let's appreciate our soon-to-be group. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our brother, Jimmy, and his wonderful wife-to-be, Hope, wave your hands. Hallelujah. Tomorrow by this time, they'll be happily married, so we really don't have much time. Peptic ulcer. Please come out quickly. Break every chain. We're going to minister to everyone. Just, please, I hope we all have a... Sir, 
Please lift your hands. You. Yes. Just lift it high. Look at me. That devil right now I command to leave you. Just look at me. Just look at me. Right now. Take your hands off his life. Right now. Right now. Come out of him right now. I hear the chains falling. Look at me, brothers and sisters. Please look at me. This is not magic. We are not playing games. This is business tonight. Right? You have a role to play. Your role is to believe God. Forget about me. Are you following me now? Hi. Good to see you. Come. She used to hold my Bible those days. Come now. No. She used to hold light for me. Remember? First and second generation here and I. Third generation. The uh, Jebo people. They wouldn't know. Hallelujah. These were the ladies that went for crusade those days. We were broke, but we had God. So we knew it was just a matter of time. Hallelujah. And then they used to climb the trees to plug firewood. But now most of our ladies, oh, the stove is not good. I want microwave. I'm just joking, but I'm serious. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray for you. That devil is a liar. Hallelujah. That devil is a liar. So I'll start with you. Can I pray for you? Please make sure you have your request. I'm so glad we have a lot of men of God here. I saw Prophet Bob celebrate him. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Manasseh in the house, celebrate him all the way from Abuja. We're going to do a lot of that, but Pastor Williams is here. Hallelujah. The pastor house on the rock, Kano is here. God bless you, sir. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Jake's all the way from Abuja. Bishop is here. Good to be married. He's just smiling. He has been smiling. Hallelujah. Okay, I see Suleiman. Suleiman is here. And we're happy to have Kenny back too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's, let's deal with the issues we have now. Praise God. Please, while you're standing there, I want you to be praying. Even as we minister to these people, the Lord will heal you now in Jesus' name. It will be very fast because we have a lot of cases to deal with. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ah. There is something the Lord is showing me. There is someone is already becoming for you like madness. Madness. Sometimes you start talking or doing things as if you're not in your right mind. Please, if you're here or somebody brought him, immediately we finish, just bring the person out. It's, it's like madness. Hallelujah. It's like madness. That devil is a liar. Hallelujah. As we worship in your presence, there is healing the Holy Spirit gentle touch is flowing Jesus I believe Jesus there is healing The Holy Spirit chance to touch is blowing Jesus. We believe, we believe Jesus. There is healing in your
to the sick if you brought any sick person this is a time to minister to them hallelujah i won't be doing this alone i'm glad we have um a lot of hands and we're going to do that please carry him if you, if you can't get up just take him and let him lie down somewhere there so that we can have space come just turn. Ha. you won't be mad in jesus name your head. Let him go now. 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 Alright, so you came with someone sick, please come out quickly. Please, if you came with children, if you came with children, don't leave them alone. Just come out with them so that we can minister to them. Quickly, please, bring them out. Worship team, you're going to lead us. And um, let's have all of them. Ushers, coordinate them. Hold on, what's wrong with her? Let me just start with her quickly. What's the issue? Hold on. While they come, please hurry up. If you came here for healing, just come and line up quickly. What's her issue? Let me just pray for her. I'm very touched seeing her. Who brought her? She came on her own. Did she tell you she's sick? What's wrong? Hepatitis. That's, that's what is wrong with her now. Or she just fell down. Hold my hands. Mm, I bring you life. The power of the kingdom I represent. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are not hepatitis. You are a spirit. You won't confuse us. Go. Now. Out of her. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let her rise up whole. Just let, let, just let, leave her down. She will rise up whole. Hallelujah. Those of us standing here, I need you to know that there are two great spiritual weapons that are responsible for the release of God's healing. Please listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing comes from the body of Jesus. Are you listening to me? Healing comes from the body of Jesus. But in scripture, there have been two categories of scenarios that compel the healing power of God. Number one, when people acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Second, when they cried for mercy. God cannot hear mercy and not act. Blind Bartimaeus said, have mercy on me. The Bible says, it is only for the Lord's mercy. Otherwise, it would have been consumed. He said, I will have mercy. Even favor can happen only when mercy is released. Hallelujah. He said, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. The goal is not mercy. The goal is favor. But without mercy, the favor of God cannot show up. Mercy is not for sinners. It's the character of God that compels his compassion. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with getting born again. Praise the Lord. Look at these children. Only God knows what is wrong. See my friend with beer, beer cap. Come. Let's start with you. You and your brother. <laughs> Look at them. Turn around. Let's see you wonderful children with their beer caps. You must be healed. In Jesus' name. Alright, so I'll invite the men of God, Jakes, Bishop, Manasseh, Ejimi, how about healing the sick and casting out devils on your wedding eve? That's right. Rather than drinking beer and receiving a yoke that you cannot manage. Praise the Lord, prophet sir. Please, we're going to minister to them. Just, just direct them. 
it really doesn't matter who prays for you. Don't just say you must be. No, don't. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Worship team, are you ready? So let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. We will do this very fast. Okay, I'll pray for them. Go ahead. God is a miracle worker. God is a glorious God. Out of her. God is go, go, go. a miracle worker. God is a glorious God.
do the impossible do the impossible do the impossible do the impossible let me hear you say do the impossible hallelujah please as we are praying for you make sure you check yourself check yourself a lot of things are happening please stand up everybody Hallelujah. Now I'm seeing somebody, you're having a burning sensation. It comes very strongly, especially in the night. Like your half right side, almost the whole of your half right side, burning sensation from your chest region down sometimes to your leg. Please wish that person come out quickly. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. And then the Lord is showing me someone, in fact, a number of people, you are up to five. Hallelujah. You feel something moving in your body. This has happened recurrently. Sometimes it's so much you even have to turn. You feel it literally moving. Please come out quickly. Quickly, quickly. Please, let's save time. That devil must go. You're the one feeling this heat. I'll pray for you right now. Hold my hands. I rebuke stroke. Ah, wow. I rebuke stroke in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I command it to leave you once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ moving objects it will go right now you okay hold my hands look at me I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ be healed now in Jesus name I'm going to pray for you now everything that is not of God must bow the Bible says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says glorify God in your body. Hallelujah. Daddy, what's, who brought him? He came by himself. What's the issue, sir? Moving object of my body. Moving object. You can imagine a man like this and the devil just comes, that wicked devil. Daddy, the Lord Jesus sets you free. Please hold my hands. This is the spirit of death. This is not moving object. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. So we bring you life from the kingdom that we represent. Satan, take your hands off his body. Blessed is he who comes Let your health and vitality be restored. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. We may not have time to minister to you one by one. Just hold your hands together and I'll pray for you. All those in this category. So I can just use one person as a point of contact. Hallelujah. What happened to you? You had what? An accident. When? You enjoyed yourself. What did the doctor say happened to you? Okay, and they treated it. But your healing is well. The Lord will accelerate everything. That devil is a liar. Hmm? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I use my brother as a point of contact to all of these people. Right now, every devil of darkness that parades itself as moving objects in their body i command you now in the name of jesus christ off you go this moment right now in the name of jesus set god's people free i command that, that movement stops in the mighty name of jesus by the power of the holy ghost the movement stops you will never have it again because your body is the temple of the holy spirit it belongs to the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ God bless you. Please go back to your seat very quickly. I'm seeing a woman. 
I'm seeing a woman having a terminal disease. This is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a woman having a terminal disease. I believe is the mother of somebody here. Um, where? Where is she? She's at home. You stood in for her. You believe Jesus will heal her. She will be healed in Jesus' name. Can I use you as a point of contact? Lift your hands. Something's moving, changing. is a liar. What, what happens to you exactly? It's my head. And since that time, all Can you hear her? Body. Sound help us. Huh? I have an attack in the night. They attack me in, the, in my head. Since that time, all over my body, is, I, have, uh, I used to be sick all the time. How long has this been? It's 20... Since 1988. 1988? That's how wicked Satan can be. Some of you were not born when the devil has been oppressing. He's an old man. Satan is not young. That old serpent story is a very old story. Praise the Lord. The Bible called him a murderer. Who did he murder? Hallelujah. Mommy, look at me. What could you not do before? What can you not do now? Sometimes if that thing hook me, like four to five to six months, I can't get up and do anything. So since last year, throughout since November last year till July this year, I am not been feeling fine. I see really. If you're healed now, will you know? Yes. Sir. Okay, watch your miracle happen to you right now. Okay, watch it happen. Don't close your eyes. Open your eyes so that you enjoy the miracle as it happens. Praise the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. God isn't done with her yet. Heal her mother, Lord. Mommy, hold my hands. Say after me, Jesus. Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. Thank you. For healing me. For healing me. Father, thank you. Thank Let your power set mommy free. Now, that wicked spirit that oppresses her, go. Your time is up. You are a spirit. And tonight you bow. The life of God is entering your body, mommy. That's what you're feeling. What do you feel happening to you now? Something is leaving you. Huh? Yes, my body. All my body is suffering. Is what? All my body is shivering. It's right it's shivering. The yes. whole, that's the power of God. Is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I set her free right now, Lord. Let the chains be broken now. Every power go from 1988 till now. The Lord rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Right now, Mama, look at me. Um, it's not good to ask you how old you are, but let's do something, all right? Something that can make you tired and let's see what happens. How do you feel in your body? Go ahead. Jump. Do what you couldn't do. <laughs> Could you do this before? How do you feel in your body right now? I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay right now. Give Jesus a praise. Do what you couldn't do, mama. Put a song for mama to dance. Look at it. Look at how she came. Come on now, worship team. Mama, you are going to dance to the shame of the devil. Look at, can you see her face now? Look at the woman that just came. A few minutes right now. Mama, dance. 
You are healed. Go back healed and enjoy yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ear problem. There's someone you came here with ear problem. You came here with ear problem. I'm seeing someone with ear problem. What, what was the issue? Oh, we have to save time. We have to save time. So I do have ear problem. What does that mean? You don't hear very well with this? Yes, and sometimes like water. Which one do you hear well with? This one. Okay, close that one. Close both of them. Just look at me. Be open now. You sense fire moving along that ear. That's the power of God. Let it be open right now. I'm feeling what you're feeling. That's why I know that that's what is happening to you. power of God is carrying out his surgery on that ear. Look at, look at, can you see the power of God? Look at, look at what is happening. You see what is happening on that ear? Look at what is happening on that ear. Look at what is, is opening. Look at what is happening on that ear. That's the ear that is not working well. That's the power of God setting her free. Thank you Lord Jesus. Look at, look at this. This is the, I'm not doing anything at all. I'm not doing anything. For those who don't believe these things, you know this lady. Look at, look at what is happening. Thank you, Jesus. Let her be free. Perfect freedom. let her God is walking 17 seconds and you are healed Come exactly Jesus. close that ear Give Jesus a big, 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 big shout of praise. You are perfected forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Which of them? Which of them? Lay your hands on all the ones that have a problem. Mama, is your eyes? Ah, Mama, okay, no problem. No problem. She, please, just, just leave her. You people don't know what she has gone through. Your eyes. What's wrong with you? Sometimes so I, well, I can't see between the three from my front. Like, what can you not? Okay, what can you see now? I'm seeing. I'm seeing, but I didn't see it well. You are not seeing this thing very well now? Uh -huh. Okay, I'll pray for you. <laughs> she had faith. She said, ah, if they won't call my case, let me call it by myself. <laughs> Let's hurry up. <laughs> Hallelujah. How long has it been? For more than. Seven years. More than seven years. I can't hear with this ear. Ah, that devil is a liar. Yeah. Huh? Put your hands on both of your ears. You too? What's your own? Mine was says when I was five. Water just keeps on coming out. And Water comes, comes out. Yes. That devil is a liar. Huh? Your ear is not a river. The Bible says out of your belly, not your ear. So that's anti scriptural. Put your hands there right now. Put your hands, both of your ears. Please, I want you to expect the power of God to touch you. Lord, we give you the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That devil of deafness, I curse you right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I bring you life. I bring you the power of the kingdom that we represent. And that wicked spirit. You see the same thing happening to her? Are you seeing the same thing? 
this is not fake are you seeing the same thing now two different people same operation of the spirit look at look at it see her face she's even surprised seeing her hand shaking thank you jesus let there be perfection in this year yeah i speak to you be open just take your hand away you'll see the power of god going through your body Which one couldn't you hear me? Close the one you can hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a big clap. She doesn't hear at all. At all with that ear. In the mighty name of Jesus. How about you? Which of the ears? Close the one that is good. Moses, Joshua, Bert, Jesus, I'm free. Come on, give Jesus a big, 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 big clap of praise. My sister, it goes forever. Do you believe this? You're happy about what God has done. It has gone forever. Mama, let's attend to you now. You came out because you believe in Jesus. I'm going to pray for your eyes and your eyes will be open. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. Perfect, Mama's eye, oh God. Cataract. Cataract. That's what is wrong with you. Cataract. That's the name of the sickness. I believe in you. I believe in you. For your power and for your glory. For your power and for your glory. see now is there any improvement is there any improvement yes what can you see hold on hold on please what can you see now i see them cattle and you are seeing them now no. could you see them very well before you could not see them at all yes try to tell me the color of the tie that man is wearing just this, one. this tie yes this is yes red what of what they are wearing Blue. you couldn't see them before Blue. come on give god praise give god praise give god praise give god praise mama look at that time what is the time can you see it? Eight, nine. no it's, it's not nine yet don't worry just approximate her okay. how can i help this I hope I'm doing the right thing. Okay. okay. How many people are standing there? Yeah. How many gentlemen are standing? Two. 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 What color of suit is the other one wearing? The dark one. The black one. Yes. This one, like color, like a or something. But the other one is what color? Black. Black. Come on, give God praise. The Lord perfects your eyes, Mama. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, it's your mother. You are using glasses. Where are they? Okay. What can you not see now? People that are standing up far off there. And then in class, I can't see the board. I can't see what is. Okay. So let's.
let's, let's just hurry up. What's, what's he for me? You're using glasses too, and you're tired. Okay. So. Okay. So we're going to pray for you. Please, let's. You don't know how terrible the sickness is until uh, it comes on you, but it won't come on you. We have a few minutes, guys, and we're done. We have to hurry up. Um, there's a there's a part of a prophecy where I speak over your life. Can we begin to collect the prayer requests so that we kill two birds with one stone? Please, your prayer request very quickly. If you do not have a prayer request, please write. It's not a religious ritual at all. God gave us an instruction. The Bible says how that Hezekiah went to the temple and dropped the threat before the Lord and said, Lord, behold, your threatenings. So I'll pray for you. What are you all here for? Eye problem. My dad. My your dad has eye problem. My grandmother has eye problem. Your dad too has eye problem. My grandmother. My grandmother. Your grandmother. Yes. Ah, how old is she? I don't know. No, no, no. But the Bible talks about Joshua who was old. Okay, hold your hands together. Please, let's save time. You can begin to submit your request, please. Inside and outside. Hold your hands. No, no. Just these two. Just two of you. Just two of you. Let me pray for you. Jesus, heal their parents, heal all the people who are sick right now. Let the power of God cause healing and perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How about you? Eye problem? Lay your hands on your eyes. You too, lay your hands. You too, lay your hands. All of you, all of you with eye problem. Ah, you play drums and you're blind. Oh, your mom, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, okay. Now we're having more people just coming to say I'm tired. What do we do now? All right, I problem both out here and wherever you are. Um, okay. Just lay your hands on your eyes and I'll pray for you. Please, we're not playing games. Don't think we're faking it. We're very, very serious. Very serious. Very serious. Thank you, Jesus. Please write your requests. Write your request. This is December. Whatever it is that you're trusting God to do for you. Ha! The power of God is moving already. It's touching more than the eyes. It's not just eyes. Satan, go! Go! Right now. Let that eye thing live by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. I touch your eyes. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. In the name of Jesus. Be healed. Please check yourselves. You can go back to your seats and check yourselves. Check yourselves. God bless you. Sweetheart, your eyes. As young as you are, lay your hands. Perfection, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection for Gladys. Please, as you go back, check yourself. Hallelujah. Let's have the requests. There's someone that was diagnosed of a heart problem. You have a heart problem. I must attend to you. Heart problem. Please, heart problem. I want to pray for you now. This thing is eating you up. It's a heart problem. It's causing weakness in your body. You can't even move far. You begin to... Who is the person? You are the one with a heart problem. What did they say is wrong? You are not the only one. The person I'm seeing is very lean. This thing is eating you. Blood is not pumping well in your body. And it's causing weakness of your body. What's wrong? I... Just go straight to the point. What is what? What did they say? What did I they was say? told my heart was too large for too much stress. Your heart is too large for too much stress. For what? Too much stress. What does that mean? Doctors, doctors. Okay. Your heart is too large for too much stress. Oh, from too much stress. Ah, uh -huh. stress. Footballer, we are going to pray for you here. You are going abroad. You are going abroad. You will come back and testify. I saw a plane just pass over his head. You are going abroad. He's a footballer. 
He's going to be a very professional footballer. Father, empower his feet. Bless him. Look at me. Don't forget about God. Hmm? Money can change people and money can destroy. Don't forget about God. You are an ambassador. He's sending you there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Heart problem? Ah. ah. What did I pray for now? Okay. Lay your hands on your chest. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Go! Right now. Be healed from the heart problem. Brother, look at me. Lay your hand on your chest to return back to its normal size right now. Huh? There is no reason for you to be stressed. Huh? If you die today, the world will still continue. Please don't let the devil cheat you. There is no reason. The Bible says, cast your cares. This world has too much worries that can kill you if you let it happen. Thank you, Jesus. Be healed now. Heart, return to your normal position. What did they say is wrong with you? It's my palpitation. They called it hypothesis. Hypertrophic uh, myocardia or something. I don't know. Hypertrophic myocardia. I don't. Uh, what does it do? What does it do to you? It doesn't yes. pump. Uh, my heart doesn't. Yes, pump the Lord showed me. He's not pumping blood in your body, and so it makes you weak. I huh? bring out foam, foam from my mouth. You bring out foam sometimes. Yeah. I need to pray for you. I'm seeing a wound inside you. Huh? You feel pain around your chest. This is a wound, huh? and the wound is rotting. We need to pray for you. This is what is happening. Whatever the name is, I don't want to know. All I know is that this is the devil. Machines cannot detect spirits. Hallelujah. Lay your hands. My brother, look at me. Look at me. If this meeting is just for only you, I want you to be healed. Huh? You believe it? How long has this been? Two months now. Two months. Yeah. They diagnosed you with this. Yeah. Lay your hands. Is that what is responsible for your weight loss? Yes. Huh? Yeah. You started losing weight. Yes, sir. Jesus. This is why you put this meeting. Whatever your name is, leave this body now. Heart be restored. You feel the fire of God moving around your chest. That's God. I command that wound to close now. Creatively close up this moment. God is doing a work. I command your weight to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will testify. You return here with your testimony. How about your heart problem? I feel pain. You feel pain? When I want to eat. I can you feel pain? When you wake up in the morning, if you lie down on this side of the chest, it pains you. It's not heart problem. No. Listen now. Let me talk to you. Huh? Do you know what the issue is? What did the doctors tell you? Have you gone to the hospital? You have not even gone. I want to tell you the problem. It's not heart problem. Huh? I'm seeing a name, bronchitis. This is not heart problem. Huh? Hold your hand. This is as a result of cold. And it's, it's, it's affecting you. Huh? You think it's heart because it's at that point. It's not heart. Just lay your hands. You'll be healed. Jesus. Go! Be healed right now. Had what? Hot, hot. Vagina. He told me. That's what, that's that's the, what he told your heart. Yes. It's affecting your heart. When I can I see you. You are even looking weak as you're standing right now. You believe Jesus will heal you? Say after me, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you for the healing. For the healing. Lord, let your power flow. This lady, perfect her now. Let her go. A wicked spirit. Release her right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Something is happening to you. Something is lifting from your chest. See, see the healing? This is this is a spirit leaving her literally. Release her right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I change that medical condition. I plead the blood, the mercy of Jesus breaks every legal access. Mm. 
I hear the chains falling With a shout you will be free By the power of the Holy Ghost Let her go With a shout you will be free Lay your hands on her chest my dear With a shout you will be free With a shout you will be free Thank you Jesus with a shout you will be free perfect her Lord in the name of Jesus she's free hallelujah praise the Lord we're going to pray on these requests hallelujah before we do that come oh he's gone he's gone with his wife ah, okay they have to go and rest praise the Lord I wanted us to pray for them we are going to pray on this request right now. Please rise up on your feet, everybody. Sass, please, can we just come as many men of God that can agree? Please, I believe in the corporate anointing. I believe in the grace of God. Please, I'd like you to pray. Stretch your hands and begin to pray in tongues. Stretch your hands and pray in tongues. Come on, pray. Pray. Father, we thank you. Perfection, oh God. Father, let there be miracles, testimonies, we change this prayer request. May they become testimonies in the name of Jesus. May they become testimonies. May they become testimonies. May they become testimonies. Change impossible situations. In the name of Jesus, change impossible situations by the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray, let your word in Job 16, 18 be established. O art, do not cover our blood. Let our cries not find a resting place. Let every cry in the form of prayer, petition, not find a resting place until heaven hears and come true. In the name of Yeshua, Amashiach, we bind the powers of hell. We release we receive answers tonight by your spirit in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit thank you thank you thank you in the name of Jesus hallelujah please give Jesus praise hallelujah praise the Lord now I want to pray and speak over your life healing miracle is just one of the many reasons there are very few people the fraction of those who are really sick are very few compared to those who are coming trusting God for other areas finance breakthrough marriage hallelujah I want to pray and break the power of marital delay right now please lift your hands hmm. thank you jesus the power of marital delay it is the will of god for you to get married father i pray 
some of you it will be for you and your family members that power of darkness over marriages right now at the count of three i command the power because i'm seeing a lot of families tied down wherever you are you're standing in for yourself and your family members in the mighty name of jesus at the count of three let the power of god move in this place and outside and break men free to enter their marital destinies no matter how long it is you're ready now want to shout that name at the count of three one two three break 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 every spell of marital delay i break it now in the name of jesus break 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 in the mighty name of jesus break every yoke of marital delay break 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 we release supernatural marriages. Koto pariata, seke teka, seke le koto bakata labakaya. Break every curse, every yoke. We apply the blood by the mystery of the blood. Yet one last plague shall I bring upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. After that, he will let you go. We release you into your marital destinies in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah oh yeah they are around okay please let them come they can come we want to pray for them those of you trusting God for jobs please lift your hands I want you to believe this while we will pray for them shortly but let's pray for jobs lift your hands i'm going to just shout jesus once and the power of god will locate people there will be mighty testimonies between now and the next miracle service lift your hands promotion comes neither from the east nor the west i don't care who you know or who you don't know we are ambassadors and we legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven it is within our power to bind and lose he said for i am a man under authority and i say unto one go and he goeth right now in the mighty name of jesus i'm going to shout the name right now jesus let there be jobs whatever power is holding people down from jobs in the name of jesus by the favor of god i command miracle jobs in the name of jesus hallelujah now stretch your hands towards a jimmy was still praying a jimmy and hope Jimmy was one of our ministers here. Hope was the head of department one time of the welfare. It's good to serve the Lord. When you serve the Lord, he will bless you. That's what the Bible says. Stretch your hands. Tomorrow there will be a wedding right here. Please, you are invited. It's compulsory for the whole Koinonia family. We must come around and back them and rejoice. The time is 10 on the dot. The reception is at Blue Roof. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands. Father, bless them bless them bless them we bless you with the blessings of the heavens we bless you with the blessings of the house we bless you with the blessings of fruitfulness may you find favor with god may you find favor with men your home is built upon love your home is built upon wisdom your home is built upon understanding and knowledge in the name of jesus christ you will raise godly children who you will train in the fear of the lord and your seed shall be mighty upon the earth the generation of the righteous will be blessed 
wealth and riches will be in your house in the name of Jesus Christ we bless you for serving the body of Christ we bless you for serving this house may the Lord honor you may the Lord honor you may your harvest come speedily we connect you with a hundredfold anointing may you see it speedily we command men to help you we command men to bless you and Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped may you get the help of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please stand up sir thank you let me give you a big hug it's good to be married all your cake was not for nothing hallelujah God bless you thank you so tomorrow we are here hallelujah now lift your hands I want to prophesy thank you Jesus please believe it for me this is the best part of the miracle service because this is where we allow the creative power that is in the word of God to find expression inside and outside please please beautiful you are wonderful you've been you are glorious faithful in all your ways my help and my reward you are glorious my god beautiful you your hands I command every door that has been closed over your destiny I prophesy to it right now be open in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus be open in the name of Jesus because thou has lovest righteousness and hated wickedness therefore God even thy God has anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows I prophesy upon your life rise and be distinguished in the name of Jesus rise and be distinguished in the name of Jesus hallelujah I command every dead prayer life in this place every dead prayer altar in this place come alive now in the name of Jesus Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Come alive now. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, They got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their hand help them. But because you loved them and you showed favor towards them. I want to pray in the name of Jesus right where you are standing. May the favor of God mantle you in the name of Jesus. Carry the favor of God in the name of Jesus. Manifest the favor of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon i pray in the name of jesus i command wine pressers i command bakers all those who will recommend you to your place of honor i call them into your life in the name of jesus i call them into your life in the name of jesus and David said, is there any man of the house of Saul left that I may show him kindness? And the Bible says they brought a cripple called Mephibosheth. I pray, no matter what your limitations are, may God send people who will recommend you and honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrow that flyeth by day, nor the noisome pestilence. It says they shall bear thee up on their wings, so that you will not dash your feet against a stone. It says a thousand shall fall by your side, and ten thousand by your right side. But none shall harm you, with your eyes shall you watch and see the reward of the wicked. I command that you are preserved right now. You have no covenant with death. You are preserved in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, And thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it, and you will find rest for your souls. I command that that direction you need for the next level of your life, for the next level of your career, in the mighty name of Jesus, may you hear the voice of the Spirit. May it be clear unto you. May it be clear unto you. I open ears and I open eyes to hear and see and comprehend that which the Holy Ghost wants for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the queen of Sheba came and she brought gifts of gold and different kinds of gifts to come and hear the wisdom of Solomon. And the Bible says when she had the wisdom of Solomon, she said that she did not even hear a half. I pray that God will give you a dimension of wisdom that will compel kings to come and hear the wisdom of the Spirit in your life. Receive that dimension of wisdom in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? Let him ask of God who giveth unto men liberally. Let that dimension of wisdom come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. I command that wisdom begins to function in your life from today. I pray that any plague of death over your life. He said, let there be a mark of the blood upon the lintel. And that when the angel of death comes, when he sees the blood, he will pass by. I declare that there is a mark of the blood that marks you as touch not. Even as you move around during this Yuletide season, I command death is far from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind whatever puts fear in your life i want you to know that your god is mighty and able and let that spirit of fear leave you now in the name of jesus now in the name of jesus i declare whatever your family members have been praying and trusting god for before this year runs out in the mighty name of jesus listen brothers and sisters it does not take time it only takes god it doesn't take time the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing he was creating he wasn't revealing what will happen tomorrow anyway the prophetic word created that scenario in the name of jesus everything that is missing that your loved ones are trusting god for by the creative power of god's word we create breakthroughs in the name of jesus every cause of lack and poverty and financial hardship in this place in the mighty name of jesus christ i decree and declare lord your people are givers your people are addicted to advancing the kingdom therefore i curse the spirit of poverty in the name of jesus christ i curse the spirit of poverty in the name of jesus christ For God gave it unto a man that is good in his sight, wisdom, and blessings, and peace. But to the unbeliever he gives to heap and to travail, that he will bring to him that fears God. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. May that be your testimony in the name of Jesus. 
I declare that your business is blessed. I declare that the works of your hands are blessed. I declare that your ministry is blessed. I declare that your family is blessed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be distinguished and be blessed. You will go back home as a savior. Go and heal the sick. Go and cast out devils. Go and raise the dead. Go and communicate the mysteries of the kingdom. I declare that the secrets of the spirit are given unto you. And these secrets will grant you power with God. And power with men. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says and immediately his fame went abroad. The Bible says when he entered the city it was noised. It didn't tell us those who publicized it. I pray that all those who need to take word about that which God has put in your life that can bless men. I compel them to noise it abroad. In the name of Jesus Christ. May it be known that you are a deliverer. May it be known that you are a man and a woman of wisdom. May it be known that you can solve problems. All those who have been designed to honor the gift of God in your life, to recognize, to honor it, I pray that God will bring them your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And I pray that there be a hunger for the things of the Spirit. I plant a hunger in your spirit a dimension of hunger for the word hunger for the presence of God beyond your imagination in the name of Jesus Christ everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you I prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you one more time i prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be returned i pray that before this year runs out may my God give you a sevenfold restoration you can choose not to believe it you will not go to hell but I prophesy again to you that before this year runs out may my God give you a sevenfold restoration in the name of Jesus Christ doors of opportunities be opened doors of grace I command breakthrough into your life in the name of Jesus every captivity in your life I prophesy surely there is an end and I call tonight the end of it in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah the Bible says you shall call on one person and a nation will respond to you. I declare that even those who do not like you will accomplish the purposes of God in your life. I compel Cyrus's by the power of the Spirit to bless you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And every request that you dropped here from the depths of your heart we stand in agreement in the name that is above all names and we turn that prayer request to a testimony now we turn that prayer request to a testimony now hallelujah thank you jesus Christ. keep standing i want to give an opportunity to those who have never made jesus lord of their lives please inside and outside please let's have minimal movement all those who have never made a decision for Jesus Christ the Bible says come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy, and heavy laden and I will give you rest it says for my yoke is easy and my burden is light hallelujah 
inside and outside. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. Please let's keep standing if you can. The elderly ones can remain seated, but please the young people can we stand? Hallelujah. In honor of this great miracle. Yes, it's a big miracle. Now, if you've never made a decision for Jesus Christ, especially many of you outside, or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing, this is an opportunity. You have seen the hand of God, but all of this is pointing you to the fact that God is love and He wants to establish a vital relationship with you. Right now, as I count one to five, I want you to leave your seat. Forget about anyone you came here with and say, Jesus, I'm coming to you. Let's start all over. Hallelujah. Begin to appreciate them. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. One. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Inside and outside. Please keep coming. Don't sit back there. Inside and outside. No matter how far we're waiting for you. Just hurry up and come. God bless you. Two. Two. God bless you. Keep coming. But adventure, you've been born again and you're saying, Lord, I want to rededicate my life and make a genuine decision for Jesus Christ. Three, please keep coming. Don't let anybody stop you. Whether you're a pastor, whether you're a bishop, keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. This is what it's all about. Keep coming coming it's all about four Jesus. keep coming there's one last count no matter how far you are outside you can keep coming it's all about you. hallelujah praise the lord thank you so much i salute you brothers and sisters for coming we do not take it for granted thank you for the boldness i want you to make a decision for jesus christ you don't get born again just because you recited salvation prayer but this is just to guide you and to help you. Lift up your right hand and say this after me from the depths of your heart. It's not a special number, mean it from your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe you died for me. And tonight, I make Jesus Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. I declare that I'm saved. The Spirit of God lives in me. My name is in the book of life. From today, I have a relationship with Jesus. I denounce sin and Satan. And I make a decision to live for Jesus all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Father, thank you. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You have brought these ones by the power of your spirit. Preserve them. Let the same grace that brought them out preserve them. Use them for your glory. Empower them. May they be mighty men and women in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, hold on. Thank you for making this great decision. Praise the Lord. I want you to follow the ushers. We'll be having a meeting with you. We'll communicate to you tomorrow by 5 at the chapel. Hallelujah. There will be people there to come and pray with you, get you filled with the Holy Spirit, teach you a few things. And um, please try to make it. You'll receive a text to this effect. But just make sure that you are available and we love you. God bless you. Welcome to the biggest kingdom, the family of God. Just follow the ushers, follow the lady waving her hands. Bless you bless you follow the lady waving her hands hallelujah now all those worshiping with us for the first time if this is your first time for Jesus Christ dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye